We're back with performers of the week. Week two. Let, let's get right into it. Same old, except this time we don't have the exact positions. I have two guards, three forwards. It will be like this most of the time, except you know when instead of one forward there is a center. You, you get it. Uh, still a six man, still a rookie. Let's get right into it. And we start with Donovan Mitchell. Who in this second week was absolutely incredible. He led the Cavaliers to a 3 0 record without Darius Garland. He took on more of a playmaking responsibility. He had 31, 4 and 8 on 61% through shooting throughout these three games, with 50% from the field, 48% from the three point line, and 83% from the free throw line. His most notable games were obviously. Uh, against the Knicks and the Celtics, where he, he was abs uh, incredible, absolutely sensational. He single-handedly beat the Knicks, essentially, <laughs> and probably destroyed their fan base's mental health. And against Boston, what he and Karis Lever did was so fun to watch. The Kyves are really fun to watch. They're getting Darius Garland back soon, and it's... It's just great to see Donovan Mitchell taking the leap that he wanted to take. And our, se <coughs> and our second guard is Shea Gilgis Alexander of the Oklahoma City Thunder, who posted a trio record with 32 points per game, 5 rebounds per game, 8 assists per game, on 59% through shooting, with 50% from the field, 50% from the 3-point line, 100% from the free throw line. And um, they, you know, OKC are now over 500. As of recording right now, they went 3-0, they are really good, Shea is 100% an all-star, right? You know, he's a two-way player, he's playing incredible defense, uh, he's, aver he's averaging, he averaged throughout these three games, three steals per game and a block per game, so, you know, he's playing on another level on both sides of the floor, he had 38 points in the comeback victory against Luka and the Mavs, where they were down 14 points with like 4 minutes to go, and he gets to his spots immensely. He's averaging 50% from the three-point line. I have to add that he's shooting only two of them per game uh, for the season and from for this stretch. And but the way he gets to his mid-range spots and he can drive quite easily over anyone is just sensational and great to watch. Uh, Shea himself might just make the trade that uh, you know Clippers made for Paul George kind of bad for him when you look at it right now. As our first forward, we have Calvin Johnson of the San Antonio. Spurs, as they posted a 2-1 record, and they are off to a great start to their season. Uh, Calvin Johnson averaged 28 points, 4 rebounds, and 5 assists per game on 68% through shooting, with 50% from the 3-point line on 10 attempts, while he is one of the best catch-and-shoot players in the game right now. He's averaging 8 catch-and-shoot attempts per game while shooting 44% from them. He's been incredible. He played some solid defense. He's the best player on San, San Antonio and they are winning right now so he deserves to be here. He has been sensational. He deserves more spotlight and I'm so happy to give him that. As our second forward we have Laurie Markkanen of the Utah Jazz who posted a 3-1 record throughout this stretch while he averaged 24 points, 10 rebounds and 3 assists per game on 67% through shooting and on incredible splits with 57% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, and 85% from the free throw line. He has been one of the you know best players in the NBA as of right now, with the Utah Jazz winning and with the way he's played on both sides of the ball and how he led Utah after you know we thought we had his ceiling, then he played Euro basket, he was sensational there. Maybe he got more confidence from how well he played throughout the tournament for Finland. And he has, you know, taken it to a next level for and the NBA. We'll see if he keeps this up, but he deserves to be here. He deserves the spotlight. Most of the people know about him. View touches are one of the best stories of the season, and Laurie Markkanen is a huge part of that. And as our last forward, we have Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Milwaukee Bucks, as they went 4-0 throughout this stretch, and he averaged 35, 13, and 5 on 60% through shooting, while it felt like he was, you know, playing on 50%. <laughs> he was not trying his best at all throughout this stretch. He shot only 20% from the three-point line, which is not great, but we know Giannis, he dominates when he needed to turn it up, he turned it, turned it up, and especially the performance against Brooklyn, where he was struggling and then just said, okay, I'm gonna attack, I'm gonna destroy Ben Simmons, had 43 points, uh, dominated the Nets in the second half, 
and just showed us why he is the best player in the world right now on both sides of the court. As our sixth man, we have Jordan Poole of the Golden State Warriors. As you know, the Ma Warriors have been bad, one and three record, but he was the only bright spot throughout that stage with one that game. Otherwise, really good stretch. He had 21 points, two rebounds, and five assists per game on 63% through shooting, while shooting 50% from the field, 36% from the three point line, 91% from the free throw line. He had the incredible stretch against Detroit where he was like uh you know prime Steph Curry went on a run by himself scored like 10 straight uh, some deep trees it was great to watch uh, played much better defense in this stretch even though overall his defense has not been good especially when you know when you play him with James Wiseman but uh, Jordan Poole has been good throughout this stretch and I didn't find anyone else that fit my sixth fan of the week description so i've given it to jordan pool let me know if you think you know if i you know forgot someone didn't you know think about someone let me know because when i looked at it i didn't you know nobody popped up for me but if maybe you have found somebody and for our rookie of the week uh, it's paulo banquero of orla of the orlando magic the number one overall pick as he had his best game of his NBA season when they won their first game on the season against the Charlotte Hornets when, where he had 21 points on a really efficient shooting and looked, you know, as poised as I've seen him so far. His shot creation has been great. He has just not been making the shots he creates for himself. Otherwise, you know, he averaged 23 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists per game throughout his stretch on 54% through shooting, but most notably 40% from the three-point line. He has, uh, you know, been as good as advertised, I mean, even better than advertised, especially, you know, before he was drafted, uh, you know, after the summer league, we probably thought his, it was going to look like this, but he's so far exceeding expect expectations for me, at least, and I'm so happy to see that, because he looks like a star, he is a star, that about does it for week two of our performance of the week series, I hope I kept you entertained at least a little bit. Let me know what I should change, for how I should improve this. Um, and let me know if you know you disagree with my performance. If Luca should be here, who else should be here? Who was your team of the week? In a way, who, who were your performance of the week? And I'll catch you all in the next videos, baby. Doo -doo -doo -doo.